Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to keep building our Flappy Bird game. Now in the last video, we showed you how to set up the scene, and we showed you our version of Flappy Bird, which we called Abyssfish, which you can download on Android and iOS. The link will be in the description down below. But let's get to setting up the rest of our scene for Flappy Bird. So here we have our project opened in Unity, and we're going to start by creating a background for our game. Now we previously downloaded this sprite sheet for Flappy Bird by searching Flappy Bird sprite sheet on Google, and then we just saved it into our file location. And then we also divided up our sprite sheet. We sliced it into sub images of the individual images contained in the sprite sheet. And so we have our background, our foreground, our a bunch of numbers. Somewhere we have our character, our little bird that we're going to be using. But let's start by adding our background. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to create in our hierarchy and find 2D object and then sprite. Now let's rename this to background and let's drag in one of these two backgrounds into our sprite field on the sprite renderer. So I'm going to pick this first one, drag it in there, and you can see that it's a little small, so we're going to want to rescale it up so that it fits in our scene. So I'm going to go there, so around about 4.5, and then let's see where 4.5 gets us. So that's pretty good. 4.5 is a good size. It goes a little bit off the ends for uh, the bottom and the top, but it matches up pretty well with our sides. Now our aspect ratio might change depending on which device we have, and so we want to just make sure that for all possible devices that our background will not be smaller than our camera size. And to do that, you just want to test each of the possibilities. So let's try a 3, 4, and you, you can see here that it it's too small on the sides because we can see this blue space. And so to fix that, we can just scale it up a little bit more. So probably a 5.5 and let's oops, do 5.5 for the height as well. So this makes it so that the middle line of where the grass meets the clouds and the clouds meet the sky might not be in the right position in which we want. And to fix that we can just move the background up in the Y position. So I'm going to move it to right about there because we're still going to have the foreground in front of our background. And so we want to have room for our foreground to go. And so let's go ahead and add our character for now. So let's create a new 2D object sprite and let's rename it to player. And let's find the bird that we want to use for our sprite and um, there should be one that's colored there was a black and white one up above but down right here let's use this blue bird and you can see that he's pretty small as well so let's go ahead and scale him up and I'm going to see what does 5 look like 55 is way too big 5 is a good size I'm going to actually change my aspect ratio back to 10, 16, and we can actually probably make him a little smaller, so maybe 3. And let's go ahead and center him in the X and the Y. So there's a few things that we're going to want to add to our player before we start coding the movement. One is the collider, and the other is ridge body. 
And so let's go ahead and add those components. So first, let's add a physics 2D circle collider. Let's just keep it simple with a circle because our bird is somewhat a circle. You're going to want to make sure that the circle collider doesn't extend beyond the sprite itself. Because if a player is playing your game and the circle collides with an object and kills the bird, when players see that the bird has died too early, they're going to feel like they've been ripped off or that your game isn't precise enough. And so let's reduce the radius of our circle collider until there's no area that's extended beyond a portion of the sprite. So I'm going to go with a 0.6. Nope. 0 0.06. Yep, that's a good size. Now let's go ahead and add the rigid body. So I'm going to go physics 2D, rigid body 2D. Now the nice thing about the rigid body 2D is that it gives you the gravity scale as an option in the inspector. Whereas if you're using a rigid body 3D, in order to change the gravity that's acted upon the object, you actually have to change that in the project settings. So to do that, you go to edit setting, uh, edit project settings, physics, and there's an option up at the top which gives you gravity options for X, Y, and Z. And you can see that the Y is negative 9.8, which is gravity. But we don't need to mess with this because we're using a 2D collider. So let's go back to our player and let's change, the, let's actually just leave the gravity scale for now at one because one converts, I guess, to that 9.8 gravity. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And you can see that our bird just drops and goes off the screen. And so that's half the movement of the bird for the flap, for a Flappy Bird game. So now that we have those two things, let's go ahead and create a new script and we're gonna save that into our scripts folder. And I have a scene saved in our scripts folder which doesn't belong there. So I'm going to go ahead, create a new folder for our scenes. Oops. Okay. So scenes and let's drag that and into the assets folder and then drag our scene into the scenes folder. So now that our scripts folder is open and empty, let's go ahead and create a new script for our player controller. And I'm going to call it player controller. And then I'm going to open it in visual studios. Once you have it opened in Visual Studio, so let's go ahead and start by creating a new function, which is going to be called in our update function. And this is going to be for the flap or the movement up. And so let's call it void flap. And let's open it. And then let's make sure that we call it in our update function. But we're not going to just call it alone in our update function we're going to actually use an if statement to recognize when the player touches the screen. So let's say if and then input dot get button down and then inside parentheses because this is a function we want to give it the parameter fire one and that is the left mouse click or if you're playing on a phone, it'll be uh, a screen touch. So then we want to make sure that we put our function in parentheses because we might have other functions to go inside this if statement. Now before we add any code inside our flap function, there's a couple variables that we're going to need to create. And so up at the top, let's create a public float and we're going to call it flap force. This is going to be the force used to push our bird up in the air so that we can keep it from falling to the ground and dying. The next variable that we need to create is a variable to hold the rigid body of our bird. For this variable, let's make it private because we can get 
this component from the object because this script is attached to our bird. So let's make it a private rigid uh, body 2D. Make sure that it's 2D unless you're doing it in 3D. And let's call this RB. Now in order to save the value of our rigid body component into this variable, in our start function, we're going to need to call our RB variable and set it equal to get component and in carrots we add rigid body 2d and then make sure that we put parentheses and a semicolon so now that we have this variable and a value saved into this variable we can use it in our flat function so I'm going to first call our RB and then I want to use the velocity of our rigid body and I want to set it equal to vector 2.0. This is going to cancel out the velocity of our bird at this particular moment in time. Once we click the screen, that velocity should be zeroed out so we can give it an extra boost in the positive y direction. Now we want to add the force to our bird. And so we're going to call rigid body or RB and then add force and this is a function and so we want to have parentheses and give it the parameter of our flat force and so we're going to call new vector 2 and the x value is going to be 0 but the y value is going to be our flat force once you've added this line let's go ahead and test our function so I'm going to save that, go back to Unity, and make sure that I attach this script onto our player. So I'm going to select our player, and then click and drag our script onto the inspector. Now we need to set a value for our flat force. If we leave it at zero, then nothing's going to happen, except for the velocity when we click the screen is going to get canceled out. But that will be short-lived. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start with five. So I'm going to hit start and our bird starts falling and I can click and you can see how it, it stops him from moving down. So maybe five is a little too small because that only prevents him from falling for half a second. Let's go ahead and try a hundred. So I'm going to hit play and as I click the screen you can see that now I'm keeping the bird from falling. I can just keep clicking, 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 and I can actually make it so the bird goes up. But 100 might be even too small. You might want to have it click and have him go up quite a bit so that players have to judge the precise time of when to click the screen so that they don't go too high with one click, but they don't have to like keep clicking the screen in order to have the bird fly. And so 200 is pretty good. You can even make it maybe 500. But I'll leave it up to you guys because that's the best part is once you get this code, you can make it do whatever you want. You can add it a thousand and just have them fly off the top of the screen. That's up to you. So this is everything that we're going to cover in this video. We hope it was straightforward and makes a lot of sense. If there's any questions you have, make sure you leave them in the comments below. In our next video, we'll start by creating the death zones for our bird so that we can trigger a game over. Make sure that you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.